Welcome back to another episode of Conversations on Creativity and Life. I'm your host, Rochelle Dion, and this is part two with Stephen Peasley. Join us this time as we discuss balancing your regular career with your creative work and finding inspiration. I've been trying to find that balance of the, the career software stuff and the theater work and because it's it's really hard to do both to a full capacity that's impossible for me i can't figure out how to do both like full steam so right now i am trying to figure out how i can do that and if that means shifting to a freelance career so then if a theater gig lands and i manage to book it then okay, I can just reconfigure my time a bit so I can do three weeks of theater rehearsals. And then once we're into the show, then I can be picking up some of my freelance work again and find that nice balance. Uh, I haven't found it yet. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. So. <laughs> uh, wouldn't it be amazing if we could all just dive into doing theater all the time and, or, you know, songwriting or some kind of performance. Um, yeah, that's the uh, that's the age old question, right? You know, whether we want to earn our living from our craft or keep it as that piece of expression, that other side of ourselves that we get to express kind of what's happening in the rest of our life. You know, is it the focal point or is it sort of everything that surrounds the focal point? And, and to what degree are we are we, you know, enacting that creative part of ourselves? Uh, and I and I I personally believe there is no formula. There is no one way that's going to be right for every person. I certainly have, um, you know, a tremendous amount of respect for the folks who who commit to it full time and are willing to live in their car or, or out of a suitcase or you know whatever it takes to to make make things happen for them. But I also think that a lot of people have families or have responsibilities, and that particular way of life isn't necessarily possible for them. So then how do they approach their creativity and how do they fulfill that part of themselves so that they don't resent their families or resent uh, their jobs or resent those other parts of their lives that are that are equally as important, um, but still stay fulfilled in, in the same way. So it's a really, it's, it is a challenge and I think you're, you're doing a great job of it. And um, yeah, we, we can't wait to stay tuned and, and see how that all turns out for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and me both. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I wanted to talk a little bit about inspiration because honestly, so to, to share more of our story and, and how we kind of met up again after all this time was, I think, quite hilarious. So you mentioned that we were in The Sound of Music together. That was in our in our high school years, in our high school play. I think it was 1996 or 1997. Yeah. So as I told you already, I scrounged around this morning and found a photo. So this is, this is Stephen and I as Rolf and Liesel. Can you see it, Stephen? It's got a bit of a glare. Is Tilt it blurry? It oh, there you go. Is oh, we're so that? young. So young and so cute, right? Yeah. We're all 16 going on 17, as the song says, or 17 yeah. going on 18, and it was all very adorable. And then uh, recently, and, and I know that you know this story, but for our listeners, um, my husband and I had a, a reason to celebrate. So... Um, I had just finished all my coursework for my master's degree and I was taking a little break before practicum and my husband who just got back into his aviation career after a 12 year hiatus and that's a whole story onto itself. He just found out that he was going to be transferred to Calgary so instead of commuting all the way to the north of the province for his work, he was going to be based here at home and you know be able to commute from home. So we had so much to celebrate but I had said to him. I, I want to celebrate. We really need a date night. Like we're in desperate need. We've both been working our butts off, but I like, I have no bandwidth. I need you to plan it. I need you to execute it. And it's got to be amazing. So <laughs> no pressure, you know? <laughs> and uh, so poor guy, that's, that's not fair, but I did it. And, and he, and he delivered. And so long story short, he bought us tickets to uh, the jubilation jubilations dinner theater based on a, on a recommendation of a pilot friend of his and so off we go and we go in and I'm so pumped, right? The whole thing is just so cool. I've never been to a dinner theater like that before where even the wait staff is, is characters in the, in the musical in, in a sense, you know, 
Um, so that I was already having a great time and just like could not take the grin off my face. Uh, and and I, and I see this person over there who's like, like kind of familiar, but you know, that just goes to show you when you're not expecting somebody, you know, out of context, out of time. I was just like, and I, and I'm looking at my husband and then I'm turning around and I'm looking at you again. And then I'm looking at my husband. I was like, you know, there's a guy over here who seems so familiar to me, but I just can't, he kind of looks like this guy I went to high school with. And then I was like, actually, he looks a, a lot like that guy I went to high school <laughs> with who I was in a musical with. And then it just sort of dropped. So I naturally pulled out, can you see this now? Uh, it's blurred out. Is it? Uh, yeah. It's x-rated, so it's blurred. There, yeah, oh, there it yeah. is. He's naked in it now. Yeah, so right you were in, you played this, this amazing role of Jim in The Office, the musical from Jubilation's Dinner Theater. It was amazing. We had a blast. We loved The Office anyway. So that, that was an easy sell for us. We were already in love with the characters and already in love with the, the comedy. Tell me about that experience and tell me about, um, I mean, I got onto this subject because I said, you know, I wanted to talk about inspiration because bumping into you there on that day, in that time, in the right moment, really reignited something in me and I was like oh my god I miss this I love this this is you know my soul is so happy right now and I'm just smiling like from the inside and it really reminded me like it reconnected something that had been very disconnected for a very long time and and I'm so grateful to you I feel like that whole thing started with you but I'd love to hear about your experience with that theater company and other theater companies whatever you feel like talking about there I noticed your table too, and I kept looking over and I was like, there's something coming off that table. And you're <laughs> back with me when I, every time I looked over, just the way I was walking by. And then, yeah, I, when I came over to the table, yeah, you just turned around and we're like, well, here we are. <laughs> and to hear you say that it, because you shared that with me that night too, that it had awakened this this creativity or, or something inside you. Um, and for me, that show, it, it was one that I, I didn't think I would ever do a show like that because it is, um, you know, it's not like a traditional book musical. It's, it's a parody of something where these characters are established. Like when people think of Jim, they do not picture this face. They, have that locked in so it's it's a challenge to try to get people to really see you as Jim and to just accept the reality of well this is the jubilations you know presentation of Jim and of the office I feel like after you watch it for a little while it's that kind of starts to blur and you do just kind of find yourself taking it in and accepting that no, this is Jim and that's Angela. That show, um, the, actually the person who was playing the piano in that improvised musical that you saw. So she was doing the musical direction and choreo for that show, The Office. And she had asked me if I would be interested uh, in putting my name forward to audition for it. So yeah, I gave it some thought and I, it wasn't something I ever thought I would do like that, just that type of show where, you know, it's kind of top 40 songs and, um, but I said, yeah, I, I would try that. So yeah, auditioned and I became Jim and that was my first Jubilations show did not really know what to expect. I had been to a couple of them before and they were always really fun. It's a really fun night out and a really complete night out too. Like you don't have to, okay, we'll go to dinner and then, oh, we'll go to the theater and then, oh, we'll go for drinks. Like it's all just in one place and it's just a nice full night out. So I was familiar with kind of how it worked and kind of the structure and the timing of the night. And I think at least for that show with The Office, the cast that I worked with, they were just so great. And the the company, like they were, 
the whole experience was really great. Like everybody behind the scenes, uh, kitchen staff, you know, front of house, everything in between. Everybody I, I worked with and saw every night, they were, they were great. And they just, every time I headed over to the theater on a show night, there wasn't a single night where I thought, oh, this again, okay, how many more of these do we have? I was genuinely excited to get there every night and do that with everybody. And the, the songs were ones that, you know, I would never normally find myself singing, but they just, they fit so well with the story and with the show. Now I find myself singing those songs, like, there she goes. I would never have sung There She Goes just on my own, but yeah, now it's in my head and uh, you know, sing it every now and then. But the interesting thing about that show is they, they always started in Calgary. They put it up for three months, iron it out and, you know, tweak it and kind of see how the audience responds to things and maybe make some adjustments. And then at the end of the three months, big truck rolls up in the back and they just tear it all down and they load it into the truck and then they drive up to Edmonton, set it all up there, and then they put it up there for three months. And then it goes to Winnipeg at celebrations. So it's, if you do the whole show, it is a nine month tour. So I did just Calgary and everybody else went on to do Edmonton. And I went and saw it in Edmonton a couple of weeks ago. And oh, fun. it was really fun to watch it from the audience. So now I see what you mean. It's a fun show. <laughs> <laughs> and so I saw the new gym. So that was odd. And he learned the role from watching my tapes. So yeah, it's an odd experience just seeing somebody who the little choices that I made on stage that aren't necessarily scripted, seeing somebody else do those same things just because, I don't know, I just thought it was a good choice at the time. <laughs> but that, I, 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 think, I think you should get in there sometime. It's, <laughs> it's fun. And we did, in Calgary, we did 60 shows. And yeah, never got sick of it. It was just, it's fun just connecting to those audiences. And with that particular dinner theater format where you do the roving character stuff too, in between the acts, like we're out there in the crowd in character talking to people, you really do connect with people and you connect with such a variety of people. There was a young girl who's in high school and she wants to pursue a career in theater. So she was really interested in chatting with a few of us after the show and talking about working in, you know, a, a professional theater setting. And somebody else, it was, uh, it was her 85th birthday and she was out for a night out and just chatting with her at the table. She said, oh, if, if you, would do like, oh, a Sound of Music song in there. Oh, that's my favorite musical, it would just be wonderful. I'm like, oh, I don't know if we know any Sound of Music. But then I actually, I went backstage we, and we did the next act. And then at the next break, I went over and I sang Edelweiss to her at the table. Aww. And her family, they had their phones out and um, we, we were just like locked into each other. I was, you know, I kind of crouched down by the table and I was just serenading her and, it was just a lovely moment and she got, you know, kind of emotional and um, you, you have, you know, you're doing this show and it's fun and you're getting just reactions from the audience and that fuels you. But then with jubilations, you have these moments of opportunities to connect with people like that, that you don't get in a lot of other places and having some of those conversations with, you know, realizing, oh, I might actually be inspiring the next generation. Not that I'm like incredible, but just, well, they're here and we're all a part of this together and we're connecting and talking about experiences and talking about 
these pursuits and following what really means something to you as, as a passion and, and then having these other connections with people who there was someone who was, it was supposed to be a first date, but he got stood up. Oh no. So he was there all alone at, at a two seater and he got ghosted. So that was a totally different kind of interaction, but we, we were all aware of it on the cast. So throughout the night, like we, we would go and check in, we'd sit and like, we're trying to really make a night out of it for him. So yeah, with that type of a show where you're out in character interacting with, you know, 300 people in, in the crowd, you, you get these really unique opportunities to have these really unique connections. And as fun as that whole show was, and as great as that whole cast was, I, loved so many moments there's so many of those interactions with the audience that have really stuck with me and that you wouldn't have had if it was just we're on stage we're performing to the audience and then we're we're off so it's a it's a different theater experience there but it, it comes with some real moments that are that are pretty nice to cherish now I love that. Thank you for sharing those moments with us. I think that's incredible. And I, I love how you, you mentioned, you know, the, the young lady who, who is looking uh, to maybe pursue this as one of her passions alongside the 85 year old lady who's celebrating a birthday. And, and I can imagine everything in between, you know, these, these beautiful connections that you make and uh, these places to inspire and to be a, a kind of unwitting mentor without even realizing it really, you know, we, we never, we're never fully aware of the impact that we have on people, um, be it in a, in a creative aspect or in any other aspect as we walk through the world. So it's it's beautiful to to think of those impacts that we might have had on people, as well as the impacts that those audience members have on us and have on our our takeaways after the show, right? And and what makes it meaningful for us. And just as a as a way to close out here, because I do I do want to be respectful of your time. But I was wondering if you would want to comment at all, because I know you've done some work for film and television and stuff like that as well. And I'm curious how that feels the same for you and how that feels different at a, as a craft in particular, because you're not interacting with people. But now um, I can only speak to my own experiences, but I know I knew very quickly. Pardon me? Yeah, no worries. I knew very quickly that that wouldn't be my role because I don't enjoy the, um, the coldness of the steel of the, you know, booms and mics and cameras. And I, to me, that completely loses, I lose that connection feeling for myself. So I can imagine that I wouldn't be good at, at necessarily connecting uh, with an audience through that medium. I know that you're connecting with the actors on stage, but Oftentimes you're, you know, you're in front of a green screen or you're connecting with, with very cold, different elements and you're really having to create that whole world yourself. What are your experiences uh, in film and television kind of as, as it pertains to being different from the connection aspect of the theater? There's more forgiveness for mistakes because you can just redo it. <laughs> It's really hard in any live performance setting. If it is a, a significant mistake to, you know, you have to find your way back or you have to, if you can try to justify the mistake or um, like sometimes it's with live audience situations, there are different people in the audience who might be interacting with what's happening on stage. And that might be um, somebody who's, uh, been drinking it's you know they're out for like a Christmas party so they're like you know yelling at the people on the stage or something uh, I've had challenges with audience members who are neurodivergent and they're you know really quite vocal and you know it's live so you have to roll with it film and TV you don't have to worry about that as much um, but yeah like you kind of touched on you you don't get that immediate feedback and you have to you know you're on stage for a theater show you just you do the scene once it's done 
mistakes and all, recovery from mistakes and all. It's one shot, next scene. So film and TV, yeah, you can, if you screw something up, yeah, just redo it. Um, and yeah, kind of the coldness that you talk about with like equipment or, or green screens or, you know, seeing, well, we're not actually in a, a church. This is just like a flat that's painted and there's like a crew of people staring at me with cameras and lights and notepads and things, but have to really try to be authentic and, and really feel this and, and try to push the believability into the camera lens and things like that. I think improv training probably helps with that a lot because so often with an improv show, you've just got two, two chairs on a stage and that could be a spaceship, that could be a doctor's office, that could be a dinner table, but you have to really immerse yourself and really try to believe and accept that this is the world that we're in. So I think everything that I've been involved with, whether it's improv or, or theater or any film thing, I, I feel I'm okay with really sinking into that and, and really, really kind of taking on what's around me and, and making it the reality in the moment. And oh, there's probably some life lesson in there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I read a quote recently in this beautiful book by Stephen Nakmanovich called Free Play improvisation in life and in art and I'm going to mess it up because I'm not reading it right now my memory stinks but it's something about in order for art to appear we have to disappear and so I, I feel like that's a little bit about what you're speaking to that idea of you know instead of you being Stephen on one of those two chairs on the stage you know you're disappearing and around you you create this world of the you know the spaceship or the doctor's office or what have you uh, and similarly you know, you've got your audience, if you will, of, of light and sound guys and technicians and directors and whatever, um, but you're, you're disappearing at least into the character, if not into the, into the scene that you're, you're a part of. So I think that's um, sort of removing the, the self-consciousness and, and kind of operating on a, on a different level there, right? I think it must be the same with recording the vocal too. You know, if you're in a recording booth and you're doing a song and you're recording that vocal, you know, you're not just singing it off the page and there it's done and, and that's it. The song's done. Like you're trying to elicit a feeling from whoever's going to be listening to it. And you're trying to capture in that moment of recording it, everything that you can, you're trying to give it all you have and and pull out every bit of real emotion that you can from it so when people are listening to it that they're hearing it at at its best and and everything that you've poured into it every little subtle emotion and every inflection like you want them to feel it and and be a part of it with you as they listen to it so i think in that format too you know you're you're trying to really just let the the art of it and and the reality of it really become a part of you so you can give it back yeah for sure i i i'm so sad that i have to end our conversation because this just feels like one of many to come or or i there's many places we didn't even get, get to the chance to go today that i really mm -hmm. was hoping we'd have the chance to talk about so uh you know we'll see how life turns out for both of us and and how busy things are but i really hope that we can have the chance to to connect again and and talk about the next phase in the meantime for the folks who are watching and listening where can we check out stephen peasley where can we see what you're up to these days i have a website it's just stephenpeasley.com i will try to keep that updated with what i have going on um Right now, I have a, a weekly improvised series that I do called Next Time. Our current season is called Bridge Landerton. 
and it's just a bunch of people getting together and making up stories and each week the story progresses. I have um, some auditions that I'm doing right now so we'll hope for the best there and I'll you know try to keep things updated for where people can uh, see what I'm up to next. Um, so nothing very specific or exciting to talk about right now but uh, hopefully um, something soon. Yeah well that I think that is that is a big part of it and it's great for us to acknowledge those things uh, even full-time working uh, folks who are working 100% of their time on their on their art whatever that happens to be you know artists aren't showing in a gallery all the time and and uh, you know actors are accepting roles and and so on but they're not necessarily on tv every single day or you know so there are those there is an ebb and a flow to it so I think that's really important to acknowledge well definitely I, I hope to come check out your improv thing if that's open to to the public and sure. I will definitely uh link your website so that folks can can keep an eye on you and what you're up to all right well thanks for the chat it was great to see you yeah likewise take good care and we'll talk again soon okay bye 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 thank you so much for joining us again today thanks to our guest Stephen Peasley if you'd like to check him out, just a reminder, you can find him online at stephenpeasley.com. And if you're curious about that dinner theatre, you can find them at jubilations.ca.